about our work at Ukraine crisis media center and the f topic of the first briefing you sell of the Lichev's port uh, uh, along with the oil and fact uh, factories who determines the prices of Ukrainian assets market of course Jeff at West, uh, director of international operations and business development uh, the Texas Vitlana recruit the deputy managing director of the deposit grantee fund the Taras Yelik, director of the department for the consolidated sale of assets of the deposit guarantee fund. Good morning. My name is Gifford West. I am the managing director of DEDEX with responsibility for DEDEX international operations. I joined DEDEX in 2002 and have managed our European activities since 2004. I'm going to read some brief comments and then after the three of us have spoken, we'll accept questions. First, it is critical to understand that DEDEX is in the business of conducting fair and open auctions of non-performing loans. We typically do not sell real estate, factories, or land. We sell non-performing loans secured by assets such as these. Investors that bid on our auctions are not bidding on the ownership of a property. They are bidding on a ticket to a war, the right to step into the shoes of a lender and pursue a judgment against a possibly hostile borrower that has not honored its loan agreements. The investor that wins a DEDEX auction is not guaranteed that they will gain control of the asset. Substantial legal and other costs typically stand between them and the underlying assets. In cases, they are not successful in gaining control and their investment has been wasted. DEDEX has operated for 20 years conducting open, transparent auctions of non-performing loans. Our clients include government agencies in the US, Ireland, and Germany, as well as thousands of banks. Examples of clients include the FDIC, NAMA in Ireland, and EAA in Germany. Our clients in Europe include the large, some of the largest banks in the United Kingdom, Germany, and Spain. We conduct over 120 auctions per year of loans. In Europe, we've conducted sales in Ireland, the United Kingdom, Finland, Germany, Spain, Italy, and Switzerland, and the Ukraine. DEDEX is respected by the International Distressed Debt Investment Community for operating fair auctions. Over 4,000 investors are registered on the DEDEX platform. International investors are comfortable considering new geographies and asset classes through DEDEX because we have earned over 20 years a reputation for running fair and transparent auctions. DEDEX was engaged by the DGF because it could bring international investors into the Ukraine market and run a fair and open auction. Over the past three years, DEDEX has sponsored at least six international conferences to discuss investment in Ukraine. These conferences have been in London, Prague, Vienna, Kiev, and elsewhere. DEDEX has conducted face-to-face -face meetings, written articles, and conducted multiple outreach campaigns to interest investors in the Ukraine. The feedback from international investors in general is a concern over the ability to enforce loans in the Ukrainian legal system. The assets are attractive, but there is a concern that having bought the loan, the investors will not be able to enforce it through the courts. Some borrowers are too powerful and the courts are not consistent. With regards to the 4.5 billion Grivna non-performing loan portfolio we're discussing, DEDEX was engaged to sell a non-performing loan portfolio secured by these facilities. The buyer was not guaranteed ownership of the assets, only the right to pursue the borrower through the courts. DEDEX marketed the opportunity aggressively, including advertisements in trade publications, conference placements, direct conversations with possible in industry buyers in Europe, the US and Asia, direct conversations with the largest private equity firms operating in Europe, and local Ukrainian distressed debt investors.
Over 500 investors were contact contacted, both strategic investors, large agricultural operators, and financial investors, large hedge funds. Given the complexity of the structure of the loans and the highly specialized nature of the underlying assets, a large universe of buyers was not expected to participate in the ultimate auction. In the March 6th auction, five investors paid the $500 fee to review the due diligence materials, including loan documents, legal analysis, economic analysis, and reports from site inspections, and three deposited the guarantee fee. Of these five, one was a respected international investor. After reviewing the assets, three were interested enough to, to deposit the guarantee fee of 40 million grivna. All three that could bid did so. The high bid was 906 million grivna. Unfortunately, a frivolous lawsuit was allowed to be filed in a local administrative court which made it impossible for either the auction to be closed or the security deposits to be forfeited. The lawsuit, filed by a party that did not bid, deprived the DGF of the opportunity of collecting 906 million grivna, or, if the high bid was not honored, at a minimum collecting the for forfeited 40 million grivna security deposit. Further related lawsuits and investigations disclosed the names of the participants thus potentially undermining the competitive competition in later sales. In my 20 years of experience working in the European markets, I have never seen a situation like this. Under the DGF's instructions, DEDEX then conducted four subsequent auctions, each with a lower minimum price during the Dutch auction phase. A number of investors that had shown interest in the first auction declined to participate, in some cases for no stated reasons. For some investors, the success of the frivolous lawsuit confirmed their concerns about the Ukrainian legal system. What interest had existed amongst international investors for this sale was destroyed. Competition was undermined. In the later auctions, although two deposits were registered, only one bid was received at 182 million grivna. Every auction that was conducted regarding the assets was conducted to the highest international best market practices. The assets were aggressively marketed by all possible means available. The process was open, honest, and open to any investor with a means to post a security deposit. In DEDEX opinion, the results of the last auction represent the market price of this asset. DEDEX is optimistic regarding international investors entering the Ukraine. Prior to this auction, DEDEX conducted a successful auction, and international investors introduced to the Ukraine by DEDEX are now active in this market. We believe the DGF's program is the correct path to bringing international investors to the Ukraine. Thank you very much. Доброго дня. Я в двох словах розкажу, в принципі, про сам процес продаж і про активи, які були виставлені на продаж. Для продажу в лоті, який от ми сьогодні зібралися обговорити, були представлені активи... So the assets of 11 companies were present, 11 companies participated. These were not assets, these were loans. And uh, there was about, uh, there were 14 hectares of land near the support and also terminal in the port. And there were plans uh, to build grain terminal. And also there was uh, oil and fat plant in Odessa. And uh, there were court hearings and uh, in order to get the hold over the assets. Uh, it is done through the courts, through liquidation procedures, and uh, by buying these loan loans, it is difficult to reach the end assets. If we are speaking about this pool, 
There was indebtedness of 5 billion grivnas. Five of these companies were in the procedure of liquidation. Of six of the companies were stopped. According to the law, their assets were sold. When we put these assets, uh, we understood that the interest, but the situation with loans is really difficult. And uh, we traded through Prozoro, and uh, we held 10 biddings, uh, 897 thousand was the uh, minimum price, and we were unsuccessful in this, and the circle of buyers is not so big in Ukraine, at least in Ukraine, and the fund take, took decision to bring international advisors, and in the result of selection that was carried out by the fund, we uh, selected that tax company. It has a lot of experience in selling such assets in the world. When we chose our advisors, we wanted to bring foreign advisors to show this asset outside Ukraine and in Ukraine. We understood that everyone knows about it in Ukraine, but we wanted to attract additional investors abroad. First uh, bid was uh, happened on the 6th of March. Three participants were registered. The chronology was like this. First participant, Sky Company, stopped English auction. So these were the same systems of auction as in Prazura. And Sky stopped at uh, uh, 215 uh, 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 million, then uh, another company, uh, and then the next company um, provided uh, 233, then Sky uh, once again provided 897. So after this, we faced an interesting situation. After this, the next day we had a letter from the lawyer, and he said that there is a decision of the court that prohibits us to sign protocols and to continue with the agreement. We couldn't find this decision in the register, and there was nothing special about it, because according to the chronology, on the 5th was a decision, on the 6th we had bidding, and uh, they had to put it, uh, and, and they put it on the register uh, in five days after bidding. And what is surprising, it was made public uh, under the same number as another decision. So they have uh, the same number for two decisions in the register. This was the decision of uh, Kiev District Court administrative court, and uh, this decision prohibited us to sign the protocol of uh, this uh, uh, bidding, and the buyer was not able to sign this protocol as well, because there was a prohibition from the court then, understanding that uh, we saw competition uh, in bidding, and we took such a decision. First, when the price was formed, uh, 906 million, we started at 860, uh, 867, and then uh, we fell 80 uh, percent. This and the, the price went up. Um, and uh, it became higher, and uh, then we limited this fall, not 80 percent like it was previously. We approved four uh, biddings, first 50 percent discount, 
from the initial price, then minus 60, then minus 70, and the uh, first was 80 percent. And we faced such a situation. We had a court decision that did not uh, help foreign investors to enter. And uh, during these biddings, we had the re registered participants, but only at the last bidding that was approved, uh, we held four biddings concerning this price, 906 million, and uh, that X carried out m active marketing campaign. They informed all investors that the price is decreased. Please come and uh, look at this asset. Unfortunately, we didn't see any additional investors, and this asset was bought at 122 million uh, after, uh, during the last bidding. Thank you. We give the floor to Svetlana Rekrut. So why? We invited journalists to die a day, and why we are holding this briefing at Ukraine Crisis Media Center. This is a conscious step, because uh, selling of claims of, um, concerning Elichevsk port, this is a very difficult thing, and uh, our fund is always speaking about it. So these companies are bankrupt, and uh, my personal opinion is that bankruptcy is often controlled, conscious, in order to decrease the price of the asset. Second, in the majority of cases, there are court hearings. Uh, and uh, this is the second scheme, and we pay attention to it. So assets are stolen or they um, are made really cheap. And also, uh, we preserved uh, this cost of asset, but there, was 50, uh, there were 15 bids, and the price was formed, and at the end, we saw one classic scheme. This is claim to stop a bidding through court decision. What it means, the situation that we face now, is that the first initial price was 900 million, then was a Grutsov decision. Oh, then was 178 million. So this is the price of the. This is the cost of the court decision. So uh, the fund didn't have this money, and uh, uh, in in the press they blame us. They blame the fund. And today's briefing is called to everyone, please take atten uh, pay attention to this issue. We want to uh, present proper information to you. A fund uh, provided transparent system, and uh, I would put my last dollar that uh, this system is transparent. But some people do not believe us. We in uh, invited the best experts in the world who uh, sold this asset. And what happened? Nothing can happen until we have transparent court system, until we have proper protection of creditors. And I read reports of uh, about marketing of this um, asset, and uh, that many um, investors were informed. And we wanted that all the world knew about this asset. But who will come to the country where the decisions of the court are just bought? And uh, these biddings showed the situation. We may calculate these losses. I won't say that uh, this should be 900 million or other sum. Uh, I am in the fund in order to be sure that 
this asset, it was searching for its market, and uh, the only thing we want is to do everything transparently. On my Facebook page, I wrote that maybe there was a collusion, but how can I respond when during the first bid the company stops auction? at 215 million, but then the same company puts uh, 900 million. And uh, they just appear, and uh, we had, and the, so the company stops trading at 182 million then. So I do not blame anyone. I just try to analyze the situation. And I hope that investors, society, and journalists, and law enforcers, and all other people in this country will be able to carry out such analysis. Do we have opportunity to cancel this bidding? I wrote it on my page. These were transparent um, biddings. If we are speaking about Daptex, they are our partners, and uh, they did everything correctly. Uh, we do not have any problems with um, uh, tradings, but uh, bidding. Uh, and uh, uh, all the funds will. Uh, uh, go uh, to the, our. Um, uh, so the bank signed the protocol, and uh, there were no legal grounds not to sign. And the fund uh, uh, believed that we. Uh, but we signed the protocol, and um, now uh, the this agreement will be concluded. And at this stage. I would like to say, and uh, please pay attention to the conditions and the position of the guarantee fund. We did everything possible in order to make this uh, uh, auction transparent, and uh, the position of the creditors will be really important, even the decisive one. And. Um, also, uh, the buyer should uh, provide this money. And now we have time for questions. <coughs> Please, if you have questions, ask. Good afternoon, Alexander Musenko, Economic um, Truth News Outlet. And what can the creditors do? And uh, there is also Ukraxim Bank. And as I remember, there were some legal problems. Uh, uh, concerning liquid data and uh, why this uh, asset is pledged by Ukraxin Bank. So there is a painful story of court hearings. Uh, there were some, and now the title of Ukraxin Bank uh, as a pledge, uh, it is protected. Uh, and um, what rights of the credit about rights of the creditors? We have a Bank and National Bank, and the National Bank agreed the price, and the uh, um, and the creditor has the right for uh, this, and the Ukrainian Bank also know knows the price, and uh, in case of uh, um, some disagreement, they may provide uh, information that they do not disagree, but they didn't submit it. Uh, and uh, there were cases when they disagreed and uh, the fund responded. But I would like to stress that we provide technical support of the process. We undertook obligation to carry out it in a maximally transparent way, and we did it. Now, the result of this, the end of the story, depends also on the creditors. I do not hear the question. Yes, they have the right to take decision, the provision of the National Bank, uh, uh, 
and uh, they have the right to uh, write a letter to address court to prohibit to fund and Delta, Delta Bank to sign agreement. So they have a wide range of instruments uh, what they can do if, ha if they have such a wish. Or they may do nothing. Uh, and they may say that this is a market and it operates like this and it uh, is formed by conditions that we have and they may understand that they should just leave this asset because because we do not have proper investment climate and courts in Ukraine. And I have two brief questions to us. First one, you said that pools were traded or the assets separately. Uh, and uh, uh, for how long this procedure uh, was carried out? And uh, what about the assessment activity? These assets were traded in one pool because they are all with work. Uh, they are connected with the Ilichevsky um, land plot uh, in Ilichevsky port. That's why we traded them in one set. And uh, uh, these loans were provided to one um, industrial group. And uh, one billion. <coughs> was the uh, cost and uh, this was uh, and we have many questions to assessment to any assessments that are made concerning credits that's why we uh, put initial price at the level of book uh, value so we started with uh, uh, 4.13 billion, and this was indebtedness. And at auctions, we tried to do it at this price, and then we discounted 10% each time. That two times we had Dutch auctions concerning this asset with this price of. Uh, uh, book uh, uh, indebtedness. And after Dutch auction, we decided to invite foreign advisors in order to broaden the circle of potential participants. Do you have other questions, dear colleagues? If there are no, please, we may have final remarks. In the three years DEDX has been working in the Ukraine with the D DGF, we've been consistently impressed by the honesty and professionalism of that institution. We've at no point ever doubted their commitment to maximizing the proceeds from every sale in which they conduct. I think the UK Ukraine can be proud of the team they've assembled to try and realize value from these assets. And we are committed to bringing international investors into Ukraine. We think it's an attractive market. There's problems, but we believe the long-term um, possibilities are good. Thank you. Uh, as Svetlana said, our main task is to provide transparent bidding with maximum opportunities and provision of information to bidders. And we try to do it in Prezoro and uh, concerning problematic ex, uh, assets. And we invite uh, um, foreign, inv uh, foreign uh, advisors. And we try to do everything openly and transparently, and all participants uh, um, may uh, have this transparent uh, process. And uh, we cancelled all limitations for participation and bidding. We created proper process of trading, and there should be proper price formation. And. Um, this is not only about the market and the pledges, but we should take into account our situation, our court system, and uh, also uh, our. Um, uh, so the price is formed, taken into account many factors, and these factors 
uh, also may work not to the benefit of good price. So I would like to thank those journalists who join us today. And I know that many colleagues watch us online. I would like to say, um, no, I would like to uh, not only analyze the situation, but also I would like to call on all professional community to continue uh, their fight for investment climate in Ukraine to make it better. And uh, once again, I would like to remember about Ukraine Bank and uh, Kreshatik Bank and uh, many other cases when uh, the situation was really bad because of court decisions and it led to big losses of creditors. And the case of Elichivsky plant shows that uh, without uh, proper uh, monitoring from the side of society, we won't be able to succeed. So um, I thank you for focusing on this case. And uh, all this wave started uh, when some people accused the fund, but we got accustomed to uh, this because uh, if you do not do anything, they uh, do not criticize you. And when you do something, there are always people who criticize you. So uh, we discuss these problematic issues here today. And we thank you all. We wish you all the best. Thank you. We thank you all for attention. And this is the end of the briefing.